Thank you for joining me again today as we are continuing to work our way through the Lord's Prayer. And uh, maybe it'll take a few days longer than I originally thought, but don't worry about that. We'll keep going. And we're not going to worry about going too fast. We're slowing it down so that we can all benefit from this. We began thinking about our Father who art in heaven. Now I'm going to skip the who art in heaven uh, and go on to the next line of this prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your name. Now, hallowed be your name. May your name be holy. May your name be honoured. How important is a name? How important is your name? Maybe it doesn't really seem like much until something goes wrong with it. For example, if people were to attach your name to some bit of gossip or some lie, you know, did you hear that X did Y? You couldn't trust X. That X is always thinking of themselves. Or you couldn't get to know a better person than Y. If they say it, they'll do it. Now, you see the different ways in which your name can be attached to different statements. And you and I, when that happens, we will react and we will respond, won't we? So you think, my name? They've really, they've really embarrassed me, my name. They've really, or they've humiliated me, or they've dishonoured me, or they've disrespected me, or whatever it may be. But once a name is attached to a behaviour or attached to some sort of storyline, it becomes very different, doesn't it? Now think about the scriptures here regarding the name of the Lord. And I think it comes into great focus when you see Moses out in the wilderness at the burning bush. And there he is, the bush that burns is not consumed. It draws his attention. He comes before it. He hears God speak to him. And then he asks him in the process of the dialogue that continues, which is incredible when you think of it, God speaks with a man, and then Moses says to him, and who shall I say, what name am I going to give to the people? And that's when we hear this name, Yahweh, the Lord, Jehovah. I am who I am, I will be who I will be, his eternity. And it's something amazing. So that today you may know that Jewish people would not use the name. And whenever... Uh, the scribes were writing out the scriptures and, you know, rewriting as they did. Before they would write that name in their text, they would take their clothes off, have a bath, ceremonially wash themselves, come back and write the name because of the sacredness of that name. Well, I mean, we know how people treat the name of God today. We hear his name used in all sorts of ways as a kind of a, a slang, a swear word and everything. And that's a grievous thing if you're a Christian to hear that. But listen then what else we read in Scripture. Deuteronomy 28, 58 says, You shall not take the name of the Lord in vain. That's, then sorry, and that's Exodus in the, in the commandments. Deuteronomy 28 says, Fear this glorious and awesome name. Proverbs 18 says, verse 10, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. And then Ezekiel, a passage which I find quite fascinating. Ezekiel 36 says, all actions that bless this people for the sake of, and I quote, his holy name. I will vindicate the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations. And what is the result of him vindicating? Well, he goes on to say that I will pour out my spirit. I will give you a new heart. I will make you new people. The gospel is the outcome of that. So that the gospel itself is one of the ways in which God vindicates the holiness and glorious nature of his name. And, and so the name of God is really quite amazing and remarkable and to be honoured. Hallowed be your name. Now, when we think then about what that word hallowed means, well, much more, it's much more important what matters to God, doesn't it? God's name his being his person. And whenever we pray that we're going to be shaping our lives in ways that align with this prayer, my thoughts, my desires, my behavior, behavior will serve these goals, the honoring of the name of God. I mean, how can anybody honestly and sincerely pray that and then not pursue it? That is, if your mind is in any way connected to your mouth and your heart is affected 
How could I ever pray for something that dishonoured God? I mean, that is a crucial thing. So, each time I begin by thinking about my up-to-the-moment relationship with God, dear Father, our Father, I'm beginning to think about my relationship because that's a relational term. And then I go on into thinking about what really matters to the Lord, not my needs at all. Then what I'm thinking is my prayer will begin to refocus my relationship with the Lord and keep it fresh. Prayer will detach me from my wants and my needs, which seems strange since so much of the prayer we hear is about our needs and our wants. And then prayer should keep our interest in God's honour as a regular evaluation. How is it growing in my heart? Am I really honouring the Lord in my life every day? You know, am I honouring his name? Is my behaviour honouring to the Lord? Am I engaged in anything that the Lord would not put his name alongside? For example, is my attitude to other people, my speech about them, my use of what he's given me in view of things like Proverbs 3, where we're told there to honour the Lord with your wealth. We honour his name so that whenever people see our behaviour, they say, well, that person really honours the one whom they serve. They're really making the name of the one they serve thought well of. That's a good way of thinking about this. People will speak well of the Lord because of our behaviour. That's crucial, isn't it? And that's us answering this prayer, as it were. <laughs> Hallowed be your name. And praying this seriously and truthfully will bring a time of self-examination and then joy. I think that's the good way to see it. Self-examination followed by joy. I love those words in 1 Samuel 2 and 30, where the Bible says, If you honour me, I will honour you. What an amazing thing that is. That God would actually even tie down a promise like that. That if we honour him, he, the Lord of the universe, will in some way honour us. I think that's incredible. You don't get that in this world. I mean, you and I may honour other people in the way we respect them and treat them and so on. There's n maybe there's never anything recipro reciprocal at all uh, about that. They just simply, that's it. <laughs> but God is so generous and he's so kind. He's overwhelmingly loving towards us that he, he actually says that, that he would honour us. What an amazing thing it is. So isn't it great that we tie our name to his and that we bind ourselves to him and that we let our lives really display something that makes other people in this world praise God, praise his name. That should be the goal of our lives today and every day. So as you and I do that, let's, let's do it with the earnestness that it deserves. I'm just going to pray for us today. It's always good to be prayed for and to pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so conscious that we are aware of how easy it is that we can dishonour your name by anything we do or say or our behaviour towards others or just different ways we know ourselves. It's our prayer but that by your Spirit you would help us to pray this with sincerity and genuineness and also then to live it out in our lives. Let it be a corrective to us that we may then honour you. O oh Lord, that's what really matters, bringing glory and honour to your name every day. And dear Father, if there's something in our lives that your Holy Spirit has put his finger on, in our, as it were, that's maybe dishonouring to you, maybe something about, well, it could be anything. Please give us the courage to address this. Please give us the courage to face up to this. And in whatever is the appropriate way, please help us, even by facing up to it, confessing it, thereby to honour your name in that very action. And in the doing so, would you bring and pour due joy and blessing and refreshment into each of our hearts and lives and into our souls, for Christ's sake. Amen.